welcome back to another Daily Walk. Well, today I want to talk about being innocent as doves and shrewd as serpents as it portrays to sharing the gospel in our online world right now. And we want to talk a little bit about alternative media and technology and things because right now there is this full frontal assault on conservative thought, but Christian thought in particular. And it's getting to the point where it will not be too far-fetched to assume that what's going to happen is we're going to see it, the, the tenets that we accept as Christianity will be considered illegal before too long. And in many cases, they are in some circumstances. Now, I have a friend who has an, an interesting hypothesis that uh, if the Democratic Party gets control, then they will add two new states. That's Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, and this will give them a perpetual and forever dominance and control over the Senate House and uh, the Senate majority, and this will enable them to have a lot more power in some circumstances. And uh, that would mean that we have, oh, 52 states now, not 50, so we must redesign this old offensive flag and get rid of it. And what they will do is they will start putting some of the modern day, uh, we'll say woke perspectives into it. So maybe have the rainbow element of it for a pro-LGBT inclusion, maybe have the transgender elements of it. A lot of these things that are just becoming so big and forefront in our culture. That's an interesting theory, and uh, I think that that's a very plausible possibility. Am I saying that's going to happen? Absolutely. No, I'm not. I'm just saying it's a very good plausibility. And what would happen in that case is the same situation Daniel finds himself in. He is so faithful that the people coming against him have to find the only way, they say, the only way we can find an accusation against them is if it has to do with the matter of his God. And so Daniel is always praying. He's always praying, and they know this. So these evil guys, they go up to the king and say, hey, we have a great new proclamation. You put something into place where nobody can ask any petition of anybody except for you for a whole month. King's like, sure, why not? You know, rubber stamping it, just like as rubber stamps in government, a lot of things that we find now. And so he gets this rubber stamped, and wouldn't you know it, later on that day, there's Daniel praying. The guy's just like, hey, got one. Hey, we got our primary target. We had to put something into the law by which to accuse him on the matter of his faith. And that's what they might start doing to us, is put things into the matter that we cannot hold to, we cannot subscribe to. And this is what we might start seeing coming into effect. And so for us to worship our God it means a denial of some of the things that are going on in the matters of state. And that is certainly an interesting perspective when we start looking into it. And with that response being said, that is the type of place in the world we're getting into. But we still have this command to go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing people and making disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. How do we do that in an increasingly silenced world? Well, we have to rely on methods and technologies that are not going to be as under control. So right now, what we saw in this election cycle is we saw Facebook and Twitter taking down posts that are just completely truthful. They just say things contrary that that agenda does not want to hear. And so it's taken them all out. And that's really what their methodology, what their practice is, is to take all these things out, to silence the dissenters. And I did a video when Alex Jones, this has almost gone on two years now, there was this, this cabal of these guys who all got together and on the same day, all of them banned Alex Jones, just boom, 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 boom. So he wakes up in the morning, kicked off of Apple, kicked off of Spotify, kicked off of uh, uh, YouTube, kicked, I mean, every platform, even his hosting company. Um, why? Because this is an undesirable. Now, you may like or dislike what he says. I think that Alex Jones is a couple nuts short of a fruitcake, but nevertheless, here in America, he has the right to say what he says. And frankly, I find it sometimes comical. I mean, we got your, I'm going to eat my neighbors this year. We got the gay frog stuff. I mean, we get so many amazing things. I don't want to silence him, but there are also times what he says at least has the appearance or the elements of being truthful. And so and these are things we have to, th to think of that we as Christians are on this desirables list. So consider this one. In January of 19, YouTube released a new policy basically saying, hey, 
we're going to start down regulating content that's not our big corporate partners basically cnn abc nbc fox news all of these you know the truthful the right media the true media the true journalists they will be up promoted and everyone else will be down promoted then part of this policy is hey if it's anti-science anti-science think of that uh, in fact another one went into effect i think the anti-science one was january of this year so the one was last year the other one was this year well this means that now flat earth stuff gets completely down regulated you say well that's okay flat earth guys are crazy and i think they are they're nutsoids but nevertheless let them have their point the more they talk the more they will convince other people that what they're saying is not true but here's the problem for us as christians I happen to believe in a young earth creation. I believe that that's exactly what the Bible teaches. That's what it says. It is part of the historical narrative. It's part of the law. It's the New Testament. It's the Old Testament. The earth is young. The earth is young. It is, you, you cannot understand the scripture in terms of this any other way. You can't approach it with a gap theory. You can't approach it with an evolution, uh, evolution uh, can I even say that word today? Um, evolutionary creationism, you can't approach it for all these things. Those contradict key, clear passages of scripture. But here's the thing, is that all the scientists come down, it's evolution, it's fact, it's established science fact. Evolution's not even a scientific question. Take my word for it. I'm a PhD in molecular biology, okay? <laughs> That's insane. Um, evolution asks questions that cannot be answered by the scientific method. It's okay to philosophize about it. That's cool. And it's okay for the creation guys to philosophize about the creation end of things. But now what they're saying is in these terms, any Christian who comes down and says, no, the earth is six to 10,000 years old based on these passages of scripture, based on our interpretation, based upon our knowledge, based upon all of these other factors, based on the fact that that's what the Bible says. Well, that's not scientific. So let's just get that content off. And so what starts to happen is that we as Christians are going to be deplatformed for more and more and more and more things. This is why it's important if you are utilizing things like social media or other similar elements in the work that you're doing with sharing the gospel, whether you're just sharing it with simple friends or whether you're running a big ministry, you need to be on alternative platforms. Now, I won't touch Facebook with a 50-foot pole. I think Facebook is just the epitome of all things bad and evil. And I just won't go near it. So Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you're not going to see me on any of those platforms. I just know. Uh, Twitter, that's the only normie one I'll get on as long as they'll let me on. Of course, uh, they've, bl they've banned my publishing company because I won't give them a phone number. Um, you know, Twitter, the people that actually have an active lawsuit going on from the FTC for abusing phone numbers inappropriately. And I don't, they, they are wondering why they want to ban me because I won't give them a phone number. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but I use my Christian channel. I use the Our Walk in Christ one, uh, doubling over, crossing over into the publishing world, which is okay. It gives me a little bit of uh, both worlds in that respect. So that's actually uh, an okay thing. But nevertheless, the other ones, I use a variety of alternatives. So the biggest ones I'm using right now is Gab and Minds. Of course, the videos are on BitChute and we self-host the podcasts. I'm not relying on any other platforms for the podcasts. We control that ourselves on our own servers. And so you can find that feed though. You can find that feed right now. You can find it on Spotify and on Apple and on Google. All the places you might be able to find a podcast, you can find the Our Walk in Christ podcast. But if we get kicked off of all those, just head right on back to ourwalkinchrist.com with a variety of different podcast applications input the podcast feed that's there and you have it directly from us. These are the ways that we're trying to prevent ourselves from being as blocked. Now, could a hosting company come down and kick us off? Possibly, but that's a lot easier to get around because we can spin up hosting accounts and duplicate our servers across different places in different countries and different regions, even outside the Five Eyes groups and still direct our, our traffic. So there's things that we can do. There's things we cannot do. The ultimate point is we have to approach this with the fact that we have to be innocent as doves and shrewd as serpents. So let's go ahead and read that passage and gain a little bit of context. So we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 20. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents as in and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to the courts to scourge you in their synagogues, and they will even be brought. you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they, land, when they lay your hand over you, do not worry about what or uh, who, how and what you are to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. 
for it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. So the overall premise there is we have to, we have to follow all of the laws that we can possibly follow. We have to be the places where we can possibly be. But at the same time, we have to be shrewd enough to know and branch out into other places. So if we get kicked off of YouTube or we get kicked off of Apple, you know, iPod or Spotify or whatever else because we do nothing more than hold to what the scripture actually says, you can find us on a variety of platforms. Generally, if we know of a platform, we try and at least grab the name over there. If there's any questions about whether that's us, definitely let us know. Uh, but nevertheless, that's what I want to talk about is the importance of alternative media and where this fits into being innocent as doves and shrewd as serpents because we are going to be silenced and we have to be on platforms that will not silence us for simply sharing the message that is found inside the gospel. And it is coming. They're already starting to take lists of Republicans, lists of uh, Trump supporters, lists of, of anybody who disagrees with their viewpoints. Because I'm neither a Republican. I'm a, I mean, I voted for Trump. I'm not like a gung-ho, we got to get Trump in office as the best thing in the world. Uh, no, God is my king, okay? That's it. God is my king. But nevertheless... Nevertheless, what we have to do is uh, we have to be aware that we are going to be added to these lists. These are the lists that are going to be used for bad things. We are going to suffer consequences for it. So that's what we want to talk about. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.